Hello students, hope you all are safe at your home. Let's start with part 3 of chapter water resources. Today I am going to explain you what is canal irrigation, advantages and disadvantages, types of canal irrigation, tank irrigation, advantages and disadvantages, modern methods of irrigation. What is canal irrigation? Canal irrigation is one of the most important methods of irrigation. Over 40% of the total irrigated area is done by means of canals. Canal irrigation is more common in northern India. What is the reason why canal irrigation is more common in northern India? Due to the presence of flat land, presence of fertile or porous soil and the most important suitable condition for canal irrigation in northern India is presence of perennial rivers, rivers which flow throughout the year. Now, the water from these perennial rivers are stored in reservoirs by building dams across the river. Then water is distributed to the fields through a network of canals and distributaries. So this is about canal irrigation and suitable conditions or why canal irrigation is more common in northern India. There are two types of canals, perennial canal and inundation canal. Let's learn the difference between these two. Perennial canals are the canals which are flow throughout the year. These canals flow throughout the year, but inundation canals are seasonal. These canals do not flow throughout the year. Second difference is under perennial canal, we used to make some kind of barrage across the river, but in inundation canal, we never used to make any kind of barrage or dam. Now, what is the meaning of barrage? Barrage means artificial barrier across a river to prevent flooding. So here as you know, there are so many perennial rivers in northern India. So we used to store the water of those rivers, perennial rivers in reservoir and we used to distribute that water to the agriculture field. So in this way these are the perennial canals because we are distributing water from or diverting water from perennial rivers. Inundation canals are seasonal. Under this you have to learn one thing there are certain rivers some rivers in northern India at the time of heavy rainfall, these rivers get flooded. So, to reduce the flood level from these rivers, we used to divert the water from those flooded rivers to the agriculture field. And we all know the rainfall is seasonal in nature. So, only at the time of heavy rainfall when rivers get flooded, then only we can use these inundation canals. Advantages. What are the advantages of canals? Cheapest source of irrigation. As we do not have to dig, you know, ground here. We, we never used to make the walls around like we are making in wells, tube wells. So comparatively to well and tube well, this is the cheapest source of irrigation. Another advantage is, as I have told you, if the area gets flooded, so we used to divert the flooded or extra water to those areas where there is a shortage of water, like Indira Gandhi Canal. So we used to divert water from Satluj River to Rajasthan with the help of Indira Gandhi Canal. Disadvantages. So, if we are diverting water, maybe the water level will be rises or we are diverting more water to the agriculture field. So, it means in short we can say 
this is excessive or over irrigation if we are giving you know water that is not required to a particular crop so that leads to environmental degradation so many problems will be related to the environment what kind of problem if the water level will be rises the top soil fertile top soil will be removed second problem is due to over irrigation due to seepage seepage means when the water level goes down and which do not drain properly so if water level will be rises and it will not be drained properly then the water logging takes place water logging means the water will be stagnant at one place and you know if the water will be stagnant then it will be a breeding ground for the mosquitoes and leads to the several diseases next is if the water level will be rises then the salinity will be more salinity means that is the amount of salt present in the water and one more problem will take place that is submergence of land submergence of land means the land will be submerged under the water and if the water level will be rises sometime we have to change the crop also crop pattern suppose if we are growing a crop which do not require more water but due to excessive irrigation we have to change the idea of a particular crop next is a tank irrigation tank irrigation is more common in south india southern india why because there is a presence of hard rocks like metamorphic and igneous rock and even these rocks this the soil is also non porous which do not allow rain water to seep down so if the rain water is not seep down it means where we are collecting that rain water we are collecting that rain water in tanks so how we used to construct the tanks first we have to find out areas where there is a depression pits p i t pits are there so wherever pits or depressions are there we used to just make a side walls around the depressions or pits and when rainfall will be there at the time of rainfall the rain water will be collected in those tanks and at time of irrigation we use that water for agriculture field so this is about the tank irrigation drawbacks we will learn in the next slide advantages and drawbacks of tank irrigation what is the first advantage of tank irrigation it is easy and economical to construct means it's very easy first we have to just find out the depression and we have to make the side walls economical so no money is you know uh, very less money is required to construct tanks because we have to only make the side walls here we do not have to dig the you know ground so second is when the rainfall will be there the monsoon water rain water will be collected and whenever we required that rain water for agriculture field we use at the time of need like in well or tube well we are using underground water but here we are not using underground water we are using monsoon or rain water so in this way underground water level will be raised drawbacks are what are the demerits of tank irrigation first is silting of the tank bed is a serious problem silt means it's a part of rock like we used to say sand silt clay so silt is a kind of a very small particle of rock or sand so we can say sand silt will be collected at the bottom or in uh, at the bottom of the tank or in the tank bed so it will be very difficult to remove the silt from the tanks so this is the one problem another problem is tank is a non perennial perennial source of irrigation why as we used to collect rain water in tanks and only during 
monsoon season we get water from the tanks so we are not getting water throughout the year so when we used to construct tank it required large area so in this way the large area will be used and in that cultivable land will be affected and if the tank is wide so the water will be evaporate from the tanks if there is a shallow tanks are there now modern methods of irrigation there are two modern methods of irrigation are sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation what do you mean by sprinkler irrigation sprinkler irrigation in this that we used to spread water or we used to apply water to the crops in the form of rainfall so there is a spreading of water to the crops in the or we can say in the agriculture field in the form of rainfall last is what is drip irrigation drip irrigation it is also known as trickle irrigation or micro irrigation under this drip irrigation we used to provide water drop to drop water to the roots of the plant so water very small drops of water is given to the roots of the plant so that the water will not be evaporated directly water will reach to the roots so here there will be a minimized loss of water at the time of evaporation so these are the two modern form of irrigation sprinkler and drip irrigation thank you students have a nice day